I am Dr. Seema Watts and today we will be talking about forces responsible for bodies falling towards earth, planets orbiting around sun, weightlessness in spaceship etc. We will also discuss about the force exerted by liquids and their applications. The objectives of the chapter are Newton's law of gravitation, gravity, acceleration due to gravity, dependence of g on various factors, concept of weight and mass, apparent weight, buoyancy and Archimedes principle, force exerted by liquids and their applications. There is an interesting story about Newton. It is said that while Newton was sitting under an apple tree, an apple fell on him. The fall of apple set Newton thinking, why did the apple fall down? If some force is acting on the apple, then it must be in accelerated motion. We also observe these phenomena in day to day life. That is, when a body are thrown up, come falling back to the earth. Objects dropped from some height, they also fall towards the earth. Newton thought about these questions. What are the forces responsible for falling bodies? Is this force the same force acting between sun and planets, moon and earth? And what are the secrets of planetary and satellite motion? And he found out that the forces responsible for all these phenomena is called as gravitational force. Let's see what kind of gravitational force is it. It is always attractive. It is independent of the medium between the two particles. It holds good for interplanetary distances as well as interatomic distances. It is also an action-reaction pair. Basis this observation, Newton gave Newton's law of gravitation. That is, every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force. This force is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Also, the force is along the line joining the two particles. Mathematically, where m1 and m2 are the masses of the two particles separated by a distance is r, f is proportional to m1 m2 divided by r square. But if we remove the proportionality sign, f is equal to capital G m1 m2 divided by r square. Let us know what is g? Well, g is a constant of proportionality. It is also called as universal gravitational constant. Its value is same everywhere on the earth or in the universe. In SI units where m is measured in kilograms, f in Newton and r in meters the accepted value of g is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kilogram square. The value of g is very small. This means that the force of gravitation between objects of ordinary mass is very weak. The force with which the earth and the boy attract each other is more than a thousand million times stronger then the force of attraction between you and your friend sitting at a distance of about 1 meter from you. Very, very large masses like the earth, the moon or the sun, the gravitational force between such objects is quite large. The gravitational force due to earth is also known as gravity. Let us find an answer to this question. Two heavier objects fall faster than the lighter ones when dropped from same height. 
For this, let us perform this activity. Ask one of your friends to stand at the rooftop of a two storied building with stones of different masses in his two hands. Ask him to drop these stones together. Carefully observe falling off stones. What do you find? Why both these stones reach the ground at the same time? The activity was also performed by Galileo long time back. According to a story, Galileo dropped different objects from Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy to prove that objects of different masses fall at the same rate. Well, answer to all these activities that in absence of any friction, both the bodies will reach the ground at the same time. In the presence of air friction, heavier bodies reach ground faster than the lighter ones. All this is due to acceleration produced in a body by the force of gravity of earth which is called as acceleration due to gravity and is represented by small g. Let us find an expression for g. For this, let the mass of a stone falling from a height is m. The acceleration involved in falling stone due to earth's gravity is denoted by g. Since force is the product of mass and acceleration, the magnitude of force will be equal to product of mass and acceleration due to gravity that is f is equal to m g. Let us know what this acceleration due to gravity is that is we know that f is equal to capital G capital M m divided by r square where capital M is the mass of the earth r is the distance between the object and the center of the earth. Therefore, m g is equal to g capital M m divided by r square. From this expression, we get small g is equal to capital G capital M divided by r square. What if the object is on or near the surface of the earth, then how to take about the distance r? Well, the distance r in equation will be equal to the radius of the earth. Thus, g is equal to capital G capital M divided by capital R square. Shape, size, etc. of falling body, which means that earth produces same acceleration in light and a heavy falling body. Second thing, it is not a universal constant, but depends on place, position and planet. The radius of earth is not same at all places on the surface of earth. So, the value of g is greater at the poles than at the equator. The average value of g on and near the surface of the earth is taken as 9.8 meter per second square. Motion of an object under gravity modified Newton's law of motion that is equation of motions are written as v that is the final velocity is equal to u initial velocity plus g t. Second equation is modified as s that is the distance is equal to u t plus half g t square and the third equation is v square is equal to u square plus 2 g s. 
where u and v are the initial and the final velocities and s is the distance covered in time t. Let us talk about mass. What exactly is the mass? It is a quantity of matter contained in a body. It is constant and does not change from place to place. It is also a measure of inertia. Greater the mass, greater is the inertia of the object. How do we measure mass? It is measured by beam balance also called as physical balance. This beam balance works only if acceleration due to gravity exists. Mass has only magnitude. Let us talk about how do we measure mass. An equal arm balance determine the mass of a body by comparing its weight to a known weight. Now let us talk about weight. It is the force with which a body is attracted towards earth that is force is equal to mass into acceleration and F is equal to mg. If the weight of an object is denoted by W then W is equal to mg. Weight depends on the value of g. It has both magnitude and direction. The force always acts downward. How does a weighing machine record weight? A body exerts a downward force equal to its weight w on the machine. Now according to third law of motion the machine exert an upward reaction r on the body which is equal to w that is the weight and the weighing machine measures the reaction r which is the weight of the body. Let us talk about the apparent weight. What exactly is apparent weight? Feeling of weight called apparent weight comes due to reaction of a supporting surface. A body in a lift moving upwards feels heavier than the body in a lift moving downward. If the lift is falling freely with A equal to G then the apparent weight is 0 and body is weightless. Now let us discuss about the force exerted by the liquids that is buoyancy. For this let us perform this activity. A child lifting a mug filled with water out of bucket. Take a large wooden block and put it in a bucket filled with water. What do you observe? You will see that the wooden block floats when placed on the surface of water. Now push the block into the water. What do you feel? Why do you feel an upward push on your hand? What does it indicate? Well, this indicates that water exerts an upward force on the wooden block. Now push the wooden block further down till it is completely immersed in water. Release the wooden block. What do you observe? The block bounces back to the surface of water. This upward force exerted by water on the wooden block is known as the force of buoyancy or buoyant force. This force is also known as up thrust. There is a famous scientist, Greek scientist that is Archimedes. He was a great mathematician and a scientist. He is best known for his famous Archimedes principle. It is said that Archimedes discovered this principle when he stepped in a bathtub full of water and noticed that water overflowed from it. He ran through the streets shouting Eureka Eureka which means I found it. There is a principle given by Archimedes basis on this activity that is take a piece of stone suspend it 
from a spring balance with the help of a thread. Note the reading of spring balance. This is the weight of stone in air. Now dip the stone slowly into water kept in a container. Dip the stone slowly into water kept in a container. The reading of spring balance decreases as the stone is gradually lowered in water. However, when the stone gets fully immersed in water, no further change is observed in the reading of spring balance. Decrease in reading of spring balance shows that an upward force acts on stone when it is dipped in water. This upward force is known as the force of buoyancy. Archimedes discovered a principle to determine the magnitude of force of buoyancy. What is Archimedes principle? Well, Archimedes principle is stated as when a body is immersed fully or partially in a fluid, it experiences an upward force that is equal to the weight of fluid displaced by it. The magnitude of buoyant force acting on a body at a given place depends on the density of the fluid and the volume of the body immersed in the fluid. There are various applications of Archimedes principle that is lactometers which are used for determining the purity of milk they are also based on this principle. It is also used in designing ships, submarines. He invented the famous Archimedes screw which was used for raising water from lower to a higher level. There are interesting fact about a buoyant force. When a body is kept in a vacuum, there is no buoyant force acting on the body. Now, let us summarize whatever we have learned in this chapter. That is, Newton's law of gravitation states that every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force which is proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them. Gravity is the gravitational force due to earth. The value of g is independent of the mass of the body. The mass of an object is constant, does not vary from place to place. The weight of the object is the force with which it is attracted towards earth. A body falling freely under gravity is weightless. All objects experience a buoyant force when they are immersed in a fluid. The magnitude of buoyant force acting on a body at a given place depends on the density of the fluid and the volume of the body immersed in the fluid. Archimedes principle states that when a body is immersed fully or partially in a fluid, it experiences an upward force that is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by it. Thank you.